Okay, hello everybody. Uh, apologize for any delays. And um, I've just opened up the uh, webinar. And my name is uh, Ted Stevenson. And we're lucky to have uh, with us today to give the presentation is Anu. And she is um, working in the, um, as a professor for international business. And um, again, apologize for the, for the, for the short delay. I can see that we have some attendees uh, starting to come in anew. So we'll let you um, uh, share your screen and get yourself set up and take okay. it away. And I'll be, uh, just so that the participants can see here, I'll be uh, monitoring the Q&A. So it's opportunities to type in questions. And so while you're presenting, if there's any questions that I can answer or, or information I can provide, that's what I'll be doing. And in the meantime, um, you know, just, uh, uh, yeah, give, give Anu a couple of seconds here to get set up and we'll be off to the races. Perfect. Um, I have uh, started my video, Ted, but I can't see if it's working. It doesn't appear to be working. No, I don't, I don't see yet. Just one second here. Uh, I'm just going to go to the participants mm -hmm. and the panelists. And um, yeah, I can see that um, your video should be on. Your mic is enabled. Your video is enabled. Right. And it was working just 20 minutes, 10 minutes ago. Yeah, we saw you. Um, yeah. Can you share your screen and get your uh, presentation up? Sure. Yeah, there we go. So I can see your uh, presentation fine. So if we have a video issue, um, you know, um, perhaps unfortunate. Mm -hmm. but, uh, definitely I can sudden. see your presentation. So that's, that's, that's a good okay. positive. Yeah, I just thought maybe there was something I could do because on my yeah. end, I just released the video if there's anything on your end, but. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Okay. So uh, should we start now? Do we have everyone online? Yeah, yeah we have, uh, we have um, a few attendees have chimed in and uh, we're at 1039. So apologize Perfect. again for the delays. But we'll start uh, it. Actually, yeah, the technical issues is not, uh, not uncommon in these uh, difficult, uh, challenging times, but thank you, Anu. I'll put my uh, mic on mute now and let you take it away and do the presentation. Thank you very much. Super, thanks so much, Ted. And um, I'd like to welcome everyone. And we are uh, just talking about the International Business 131-161 program. Now, I wanted to relay that 131, the difference between them is just that the 161 is a co-op program so that there are work terms in between. The difference being that, you know, there's a slightly larger fee, very, actually it's a very minor amount of money, like a couple of hundred dollars, uh, but it is uh, the co-op version of the exact same program. So um, first of all, I'd like to also let you know that uh, I am, I'm uh, substituting in for Janine Lafort, who is the program coordinator, and she will be the best person on a follow-up, but I, will, I have been a program coordinator in this area. So uh, I will give you an overview of the program about like our faculty and what you can learn. So um, just, from, um, just to give you an idea of some of the backgrounds, I'll, I always give my own. Uh, that we come from a wide sources of, of specialties in this faculty because international business is so complex and so wide in scope. Uh, I have an undergraduate business degree and philosophy degree. My, my master's degree was in finance and political science education. I am now completing my doctorate in business from, uh, from the UK, from the United Kingdom. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of disciplines there and they, we, we use them all to teach this program uh, as well, uh, 17 years of marketing product development experience in a variety of different industries, as well as uh, managing and buying and selling small businesses. Uh, one extensive thing that um, myself and some, and some of the faculty really bring to the program as well is a lot of international travel, a lot of cross-cultural communication. Um, for me personally, that international travel is a passion. So this all goes into learning how to learn skills of international business. So 
what all, what does this mean? What is international business? As I said, it has many, many discipl uh, disciplines like finance, sales, marketing, human resources, cross-cultural communication. And basically, you're going to have a very wide scope when you finish this program of where you go. And it will depend on what you're interested in. The areas that we... Um, that you know you could go into is like international market entry and distribution you can go into international trade management or negotiations or trade research marketing finance planning logistics many of our uh, graduates go in work for logistics companies because the program has a lot of uh, courses in supply chain customs uh, some of our uh, graduates go in work for the Canada Border Services because they have uh, expertise in, in that customs process. I've also included a video. Uh, we don't have to see it. It was a video film, just a two minute video that you can watch on just some general ideas of the business program. Graduates are going to, you're going to have knowledge, skills and abilities for careers in a variety of, uh, you know, as negotiators, as freight forwarders, logistics, marketing people. So what I would say is business is a program where you're learning skills. We, we can't teach you every situation because every day business changes. And so what we teach is how to analyze different scenarios in an ever-changing environment and have the skills to make a good business decision. Um, and that's, that is really what we learn in business. Now, in this program, um, you will also learn not just those skills of analyzing, but actual procedures like documents. Uh, so when you take a customs course, you will learn what are the documents involved in importing a product? What are the documents involved in exporting? And why are they important? And how, do they, how are they uh, implemented? So you have very specific information about that, as well as statutory and regulatory compliance. So a lot of laws, a lot of rules. Um, you will also learn about international payment. How do international payments get moved through banks, through individuals, and what are the options of, of payment as well as foreign exchange strategies? And how do you place people, human resources, in an international operation? How do you place people in that environment? So I always call international business as business on steroids because it is business, but it is so much more complex because you're dealing with uh, different laws in different countries, different cultures, different customs, different, uh, different logistics. So it is a very complex, wide, um, wide ranging amount of, of education that you get. Now, um, if you have looked on the site, I, I didn't want to include it here because it's three years, so there's a lot of courses, but you will see that you have a, a wide scope that will cover all the different disciplines that I just spoke of. Wanted to also let you know that we are um, accredited with a partnership with FIT. FIT is the Forum for International Trade and Training. This is an international organization and after you finish this program, you can continue and um, apply for the FIT designation, which involves, uh, and, I, and I actually will leave that to FIT. You, if you are interested in this designation, you would contact uh, FIT and they would tell you what else do you have to do? Is it an exam? Is it uh, a course to get that certification? And that's one more certification that it will help you out in the job, job market. Now, the world is a, basically a global marketplace now. We uh, have since globalization really started accelerating after World War II, but now it has really moved to different heights. And of course, with the pandemic, it has really moved much, much higher as well because of all the uh, logistics and delivery systems. So there are a lot of opportunities in international business uh, because almost every organization in some way is international. Even if they don't leave this country, they're still buying international supplies. 
So there are a lot of opportunities, um, such as forecasting replenishment analysts, someone who's looking at um, ordering, uh, pr procuring supplies for their company, a merchandise assistant, a purchasing assistant, a purchasing coordinator, a logistics coordinator. These are some of the um, jobs that our students have gone into, but recently we've really worked at widening the scope. And the scope is, uh, I've, I started a relationship with the Royal Bank uh, and one of their vice presidents there. And since then they have been the first major bank to hire uh, not go to a university of, uh, of Toronto to recruit uh, some of their trade finance banking um, and banking people, they come to George Brown and we've received a great number of jobs. So banking is another sector that uh, we're very strong in and as well, uh, different other um, freight forwarding companies and logistics, as well as, as I mentioned, the government and Canada Border Services. Here are some of the admission requirements. I included them in this presentation because it's important to know them. Uh, I would add the caveat though, that admissions is a separate, separate uh, area in George Brown from, um, from the faculty in the program. They, they can answer in great detail any question you have on that. And uh, I have provided some links for that site. And uh, mature student status, that is a, a very viable. We uh, welcome mature students and you can get more information um, with that about admissions. And I'm um, just, I, I try to uh, speak a little quickly, but I think we do have time for this little three minute video now. So I think let's just watch it because it gives you a little bit of a wider scope. Um, let me try to do this. And I haven't done this, Ted, about the uh, video. So is it, how would I do that? Are you there? Share yeah, I yeah, go ahead. I think um, you're 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 going to um, when you share your screen. There's just a little blurb that says you have to share the audio as well. It's the same as in Blackboard, basically. Yeah, I'm just wondering where I would find like where I would get uh, because I have a tab open for it. I'm going to exit full screen and take a look at this. Just one second. Yeah. Um, I have a tab open for the video, so hopefully. Now it will show up. Just one second. Uh, share screen. Yeah, on the share screen, you'll see that little click box to share audio as well. Same as in the Blackboard, bottom left hand right. side. Right. Exactly. But for some reason, I'm not seeing my tab. So maybe I have to open the tab. That might be it. Yeah. OK, just one second. I'll be one second. I think we've got it. Because as co-host, I think you have full uh, control there that we should be able to. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. OK, I think that. Uh, here we go. Uh, share screen. Ah, here it is. All right, I got it. So let's just watch this little video. It's just it was uh, shot a couple of years ago so to give you a, a wider scope of our of what international business is about. Yeah, there we go. You can see it there perfectly. Thank you, Anu. Yeah, fantastic. Way oh, to go. Fantastic. OK, let's watch this video. Imagine a career in which you work with organizations across the globe to create new and innovative business solutions. International business graduates can use their skills in Canada or take them just about anywhere in the world. Right now, the growth of international trade is unprecedented. Why is that? Well, think about how the products that you love the most, your phone, your car, your clothes, were made. Virtually every company, product, and service has an international component. And what about Canadian companies that want to sell their products and services abroad? We've all seen the rise of Chinese manufacturing. Canadians buy millions of Made in China products every year. But did you know that Canada is benefiting from international trade the other way by selling to China? This is due to the dramatic increase of affluent Chinese consumers 
and they love our Canadian products. For example, Ontario wine producers, recognizing this demand for Canadian products, have expanded their reach into the lucrative Chinese market. A great example of international business at work. Here's how. It begins with business analysts who research and devise the Chinese expansion strategy. The strategy is then taken over by international marketers in China who have a deep understanding of local speech and preferences. Supply chain managers, logistics coordinators, customs analysts, and freight forwarders work together to make sure that the right wines are produced and shipped at precisely the right time. Ontario wine producers have been successful in these efforts. China is now the largest importer of Canadian ice wine in the world. All of these international business functions are career possibilities once you complete an international business program at George Brown College. If you want to represent Canada on the global stage, this is an exciting program for you. Want to learn more? We've created some videos with real business professionals that profile different international business careers. Click here to check them out. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, that worked well. Thank you. Hey, I'm Russ Rafino. If you're oh, I just better shut that off now. Hang on one second. Just while we pause, I'm just noticing we have a Q&A functionality. I think the, uh, the participants should be able to type in some questions. So if there's any questions, um, feel free to type it into the uh, Q&A right now. Absolutely. The other thing, uh, new, just to moderate a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about the diversity of the students in the program? I mean, I'm teaching in the finance side. As you know, we get a lot of newcomers to yeah. Canada. Sometimes they think English is not their first language. It's a disadvantage. I like to remind them that we live in the most multicultural city in the world. It is international business. Language, uh, you know, having a second language, uh, being from another country must be an advantage uh, studying an international business and trying to get some of these trade finance roles where you're where you have uh, perhaps global experience or global language or global outlook absolutely um, we're in a very multicultural environment in this country and uh, international students enrich our programs because we all learn from each other in the classroom I will you know I will uh, ask sometimes when I'm talking about a case study that takes place in China I'll ask the Chinese students that have come in and ask what their opinion is of what they see in, in uh, right on the ground. Um, so I think that is a, a great plus in, in our program is that we really value diversity. And it, as Ted said, um, you said that our whole student population is very diverse. Uh, is there any questions at this point from the participants? We have about five more minutes left. Uh, typically, at the end of these uh, sessions, we leave five minutes for Q&A. Um, mm -hmm. I know some people are always a little bit shy to ask a question, but there are still some uh, participants online. Anyone? Um, it is a three-year program. It's it's quite uh, intense. It, you know, it's a busy program. But if you want uh, specifically that international view on business, um, then I think that this might be the program for you. And if that is interesting to you, not only in working in Canada, but being able to be mobile even around the world globally in your future. Uh, maybe with five minutes left, Anu, um, could you tell us a little bit more about like, is it, there's a, co do you have a, a co-op program? Like in the finance uh, section, we've got a co-op program and despite the pandemic, et cetera, we've been having some pretty good student success stories. They have been getting jobs. The co-ops have been there. The placements have been there. Um, we've been using LinkedIn a lot to share student success stories and try to stay connected. How are things, uh, I, I mean, the banks are all showing record profitability. I think, uh, in my humble opinion, things are more challenging, but not impossible right now. How's the prospects for the students, in your opinion, these days? I think the prospects are very positive. 
Um, but I would stress that they, uh, when, when a student starts with our, our college, we have a strong career services, we have a strong co-op program, but net, their networking is also very, very important. And we are now, due to the 2008 financial crisis, um, our banks really stood up with great regulations. And I, that's why I started working with RBC to hire our business students, because we are now considered one of the gold standard banking areas in the world. And I think there's a ton of opportunities, Ted, and we have been working really hard to get our students uh, jobs as well during the pandemic. Yeah, that's encouraging to hear. And I would okay. like to add, I would like to add yeah, something ahead. about uh, RBC and my and when I was working with them, this is a really good thing. We hear a lot about work terms being, you know, volunteer and unpaid. When you work with the big banks, they're not allowed to do that. They must, they pay you. And so that's, that's a positive. So, um, you know, Canada is really placed in an international environment for trade. We are in a great spot because number one, the world, we have the entire world living in our in our country. So there's many connections going around the world with people who are living here and doing business, as well as Canada, the brand is very trusted around the world. And uh, Canadians are very trusted as business people. So I think as far as um, having a Canadian educational credential and an international, it is a very positive thing. So I think we're just down to a couple of minutes here. One, one last thing, uh, Anu, I'll just ask you. Like one of the things I remind students uh, or, or prospective students, we're very lucky at George Brown College. I've been here three years full time. I don't think I've ever had a class with more than um, you know, 40 students. And in general, on average, we have like 25 students in the class. So I get to know them as individuals. I get to help them individually with reference letters or connections. What's the typical average class side in your uh, international business uh, program? Well, um, it, it depends. I, we, I teach in the postgraduate mostly. I do teach in undergraduate as well. Uh, the maximum we would have would be 50, but it's a lot of times 35, 40, depending on every semester, right? And um, th that's about it. And it's the same situation, Ted, that you mentioned, that the faculty really get to know the students. And the students get to know the faculty and it, it becomes a, a more of a, a learning environment and a relaxed environment that way. Yeah, I think that's one of the big uh, advantages of George Brown that people don't really realize that we don't have these 300 person auditorium classes, uh, you know, where you're just filling out a bubble sheet, multiple choice question. Yes. Um, as like I did my undergraduate at Western and, and you know that you take economics and there's 200 people in the class and you sort of uh, shuffled through the system. And that's the thing about George Brown is that the co-ops, the closeness to the uh, professors, the closeness to the industry, um, you know, I, 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 I tell everyone the system is working. Um, people are coming to Canada, they're enrolling at George Brown and they're getting yeah. jobs and they're moving on with their careers. They absolutely well, are. Yeah. They absolutely are. And uh, I think that is a, a great synopsis that we, we really, and plus I'd like to add one thing, we're the downtown college of the of of one of the large the largest global city in Canada, and Bay Street, which is our business area, is right down the street. So we we are able to make a lot of connections for our students to the business environment as well. Yeah. So there was just one question here. It's uh you know it says are we gonna are we going to get better jobs? I mean, uh, the advanced diploma, which is a three year course. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if I fully uh, interpret the question, but uh, with the, you, you've got the B one thirty one and the B one sixty one. Is there any difference in the job paths between those two programs? Um, the only difference in that is the co op version is the one sixty one, which gives you more. You know, that's one, definitely wonderful to get the experience. I think what the students asking, we have some two year general business programs oh, okay and, and they're asking should i take the three year well here's the here's the difference if you want to just get a taste of business and you're not really sure you can take the two year and come and add on the three year later 
But the three year is very, very helpful because we have programs with Ryerson and other universities where you can pathway into a, a business degree from university with our three year program. So if you're planning, let's say, to go on and do more studies than the three year, if you're trying to get a taste of and you really don't know what you want to do, the two years a good option and then you can add on. Okay. All right, so we're at 11.01. I've got a message here on my Teams from Jackie Tan saying the student panel starts at 11. Do encourage the folks in your rooms to join that session. So I believe that there's a, um, uh, another uh, meeting where there's a student panel and it's giving um, any of these participants the opportunity to go in and ask questions uh, and get answers from students that are in our programs right now. Um, so we'll just give it... Yeah, we'll give it one last call out, um, you know, because we're at 11.02. Any, uh, we've got a few participants still online. Any questions, uh, type it in. If not, we're getting very close to wrapping up. And I want to thank Anu for her time. Um, I've definitely yeah. learned something here. Sometimes I wish I was younger and could change my majors. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, well be like me. Finance. I've never... <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I've never left school. I'm taking courses to this day. <laughs> yeah, I know. I see that uh, PhD. I, my, my focus has been on the tech these days, setting up kind of my neat little. Um, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. My little pod class that I have here, which is that's, kind of fun. That's yeah, wonderful. I have, I've got, so here's, here I am in my office and here's my wow. outdoor camera, my little duck cam. Oh my uh, God. Here I am with my GoPro. Yeah. I'm just yeah. a novice at this. Well, wow. you know, uh, I think we're going to be online here for a while uh, with my green screen. Yeah. So, oh, this is a very good one. Last question, which is a great one. We get this all the time. Uh, can I turn my three-year course to a four-year graduation program? Yes, you can. What you can do is the three-year course is accepted by Ryerson and other universities that we partner with to, a, to so you can get a four-year degree. You would have to do two years at Ryerson and then you have a, a, an honors bachelor of business degree as well as your George Brown diploma. Yeah, see, that's, that's an important question on the finance side for some of our students because sometimes, um, you know, there's certain... Uh, like on the CFP side now, uh, mm -hmm. Certified Financial Planners, FB Canada wants, uh, is going to introduce a minimum requirement that it has to be a bachelor degree. Right. Uh, you know, so that's often a question that we get regardless of the program is, I understand this diploma, but is that cutting me off or limiting me from other future uh, opportunities? And right. if I decide to progress, how does it get transferred from the three year to four year? And I know we have such uh, connections with Ryerson. I've had students in the finance side uh, get the diploma, move on to Ryerson, get the degree, yeah. and uh, being promoted already uh, within the TD environment. So I think yeah. there is responsibility on that. It's it's all about options, and we try to give our students as many options to do go to different areas. Yeah. Okay. So I think on that note, uh, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, thank you, Anu. Great session. And for students, if they want to join uh, the session at 11 o'clock with the students, I, uh, I highly encourage you to do that. Thank you, Ted. You're excellent. Thank you for guiding me through this. And uh, thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. And I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the session.